Bullet Punch is a pretty solid priority move competitively, but this Metal Bug fella has been doing it the best for the last 18 years. Scissor has solid enough stats, especially with its base 130 attack, but what makes it one of the greatest priority users ever is the Technician ability which boosts moves that have 60 power or less by 50%. After the Technician boost and stab, Bullet Punch becomes a 90 power priority move, even stronger than Extreme Speed. It can also run Swords Dance to make this thing punch holes in just about everything, along with great coverage in close combat, knockoff, and the ability to both pivot and get great damage with U-Turn. Scizor's main downfall is its 4 times weakness to fire due to its bug and steel typing, but that doesn't even matter anymore because it can just tear to change typing, which is a huge buff to Scizor specifically. This thing has been one of the GOATs since its introduction, and its same old tricks still work nearly two decades later, which is crazy. Alright, so here's a funny story for you. Back in like 2009, in the days of Diamond Pearl and Platinum Competitive, Bullet Punch Scizor was literally everywhere. It was one of the most popular competitive Pokemon, and I got so sick of playing against this thing that I actually made like a rule on my YouTube channel about me page saying no Bullet Punch Scizor. <laughs> and I mostly it was just because I was like a 15 year old noob, but also, moral of the story, sometimes you live long enough to see yourself become the villain, which I think is hilarious. And I do really like Scizor now, so let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so my dude's gonna go ahead and lead off with the Cacturn, which feels like insane behavior, and I have an Azelf who's here to pretty much just set up Stealth Rock, and that's about it. So, I don't really know, Cacturn's kind of annoying because it could potentially, you know, get up a free Swords Dance on the Stealth Rock turn, and then Sucker Punch is scary. But then I'm like, I'm Focus Sash, and I'm not even afraid of this pickle anyway. So, I go for that Stealth Rock here, they are gonna Swords Dance, so gonna make Thorny Tits over here nice and sharp. And I am like, okay, well, worst case scenario, Sucker Punch, and then I can at least get off a Flamethrower. So that's what I'm going to do. And uh, they actually do not Sucker Punch. To my surprise, I do get the Flamethrower off, which doesn't end up knocking this thing out. And then they actually Pin Missile, which is bad for me because now Focus Sash is worthless and it belongs in the trash. So <laughs> Loaded Dice Cacturn with Pin Missile actually kind of goes crazy. Surely it does have Sucker Punch. It has a Swords Dance. And I'm like, damn, Pickle got hands. It turns out, however, I do have the guy who does not care about Sucker Punches, and that is our friend Big Meaty Claude. I'm gonna go into the Scizor here because Bullet Punch is kind of the safest play here. They do probably have a switch, but honestly, Cacturn is likely just gonna stay in here. I go for that Bullet Punch, and it is going to end up knocking the thing out. So, I am not gonna end up on the YouTube today swept by a turn one Cacturn, and that feels good. So, one of the fun little mind games that comes along with playing Scizor like this is a lot of the time they cannot tell if I'm going to be like a choice band set with the bullet punch or if I'm sword stance and extra sharp, which this is or is. So as they go into Blastoise, I kind of imagine they're going to be shell smash. So I decide to go for a swords dance here, knowing that I can still take at least one attack from the Blastoise. Turns out, however, they're actually just going to go for that rapid spin. So it gets rid of the stealth rock, which is annoying, but it just tells me this is more of a utility Blastoise. You always just have to generally respect Blastoise as being a shell smash set because that thing will, in fact, end your life. So, I decided to just go for the close combat here. After a sword stance, it's looking like I'm gonna get some pretty solid damage. And without a boost, I know that I can take I can take attacks all day out here. So, they actually end up going for the Terra Fighting. Going full Ninja Turtle on my ass, and that is mostly fine. It's still just gonna be a neutral close combat, but then we actually see the Iron Defense. So, this thing is faster, and it's kind of funny that Turtle is just quick as hell out here after that Rapid Spin especially. Uh, but I can go for that close combat, it's going to knock it down to around half. But more importantly, now I know that I'm slower, I have a defense drop. And after an Iron Defense and a Terra Fighting, I know what type of shenanigans this Turtle is going to get up to. And that is probably going to be a Body Press set. And I gotta admit, I kinda mess with it. it generally, anytime you can use a Blastoise differently is fun, and I feel like a uh, Body Press with you know, Iron Defense is pretty damn cool. So, I decided to go into Bruxish here, and that's just because I know that I resist that Body Press and I should be able to take one, and then... Likely threaten this thing out with a Psychic Fangs. I expect the switch into the Incineroar, so instead I go for the Wave Crash, and I pay the price for it, because they actually do not switch, which allows them to live the Wave Crash, and then down goes the Bruxish to another Body Press, so well damn. It turns out Fat Boy's just gotta sit on you twice, and then you got a dead fish. So, at least the good news is, the, the payoff would have been really good if had they gone Incineroar there, but yeah, the Psychic Fangs is definitely the obvious play. It just feels like, early in a match like this, I probably should have gone for the safer option. When you not, don't know the opponent's play style, it, generally you gotta try to feel it out. So, I, I lose the Bruxish there, which does suck, but 
We've got enough chip on the Blastoise to the point where I can just go into pretty much anything and kind of pick it off. So it's a trade I'm kind of willing to make because as I go into Typhlosion and Eruption, obviously Rose and Toast, my dude, but also that's going to take care of their Terra. And now I don't have to worry about any crazy shenanigans in the back. So, sadly, in this situation, Typhlosion's kind of just a sitting duck here. Or, like, the last burnt sausage on the grill that nobody wants. And can be taken advantage of because now they're just able to switch into that Incineroar. And it's like, oh, now you're going to go Incineroar, huh? Okay. Well, I'm kind of running out of options at this point. But I do have some de decent switch-ins to the Incineroar, mainly just being the... Hit on top, I know that I can you know, take an attack from this thing. I can do some pretty good damage as long as I'm not intimidated. And they do go for the knockoff, which does a lot. And I'm like, damn, that thing's got hands. Turns out it was a critical hit. And that is not ideal, because again, I'm running out of switch-ins to stuff. And at this point, I'm like, you know what? I'm going for the obvious play then. I'm just going to click the Earthquake here and kind of expect them to stay in and go for a Flare Blitz, which you know looks like it could do a bunch of damage. But they do actually switch. And they're actually going to go into the Oricorio. Or Oricorio. Dead Bird comes in, and of course, he doesn't. Even though he's standing on the ground, the earthquake doesn't affect it, which is some nonsense. But this thing is. It's a little bit of a problem. So I do have a plan against it. Now, the good thing is, I do know what these fellas do, and that is click Quiver Dance and then try to sweep stuff. So. I decide, I'm actually just going to go for the bullet punch, because I figure, you know, I know that they're going to Quiver Dance turn one, I can get some chip on the first one, and then after the second bullet punch, that's going to actually open up Scizor with the priority to be able to pick it off. I do kind of have to lose uh, the Hitmon top at this point, but again, I'm at like half health already, and I'm like, well, it turns out this is just kind of my safest bet. I could have actually hard switched into Scizor initially, but it just I, I do need to try to conserve you know, the scissor as much as possible. So, they do finish me off. I do actually get two bullet punches, which is real nice. And we're just full of technician bullet punches on this team. There's going to be, there is shots fired. And we're just out here throwing technician hands. So, as I go into scissor here, I'm looking at the matchup. But I'm thinking, you know what? Actually, after a quiver dance, I can definitely take an attack from this. And that's going to allow me to set up a swords dance. And uh, while it does, of course, give it dancer, which is its ability, it gets that swords dance as well. But... That's not going to help you, because, I mean, you're not a physical attacker anyway, which is fine. So, after that SD, at this point, now Bullet Punch is going to blast right through some fools. So, I do just decide to go for that, and they're going to end up switching out the Oricorio. They do not want to basically just waste that thing, knowing that the Bullet Punch is coming. They decide to go into Hisuian Gudra. They go in full Snail Gudra, this thing, is the one guy that doesn't really care that much about some bullets, because he takes it right to the shell. However, we are pretty covered on this defensive switch in because, listen, this scissor is here to do two things. Throw some damn hands and shoot bubblegum and we're all out of bubblegum. So I can just go for the close combat here after a sword's dance that is going to take care of the Gudra. Which is great because that thing is a defensive damn menace. So that just straight up knocks out the Gudra. And while they do still have the Incineroar, I figure it was still worth it to set up the scissor there. They don't know about the close combat coverage and that is pretty nice. So Incineroar does come back in. And this thing is definitely going to stop some momentum. But I figure, you know, I should have the, the kind of the late game matchups here. It's getting pretty close as it's, I think, 3-3 three to three at this point. And I decided to just go right into the Typhlosion. Typhlosion is just a kind of cheeky switch in here if they want to go ahead and activate my Flash Fire. Problem is, Buddy is not falling for that. And they do go for the knockoff there. It does a dick load of damage and also gets rid of my Choice Scarf. Which shouldn't really matter that much because I'm actually faster than the remaining mons. Anyway, allows me now to just go for the Scorching Sands. And that is just because I need to get as much chip on this thing as possible. And that actually does a lot of damage with a crit, which is real nice. I'm feeling pretty solid getting some good damage on the Incineroar there. Uh, as I kind of just need it in range to where Jolteon can finish it off. Or even like a Bullet Punch as long as Scizor isn't intimidated. So... That freaking Tony the Tiger is the damn problem, and now they're actually parting shot into back into the Oricorio. So as this thing comes in here, I'm thinking, you know what, I am parting shotted, but I'm actually, I'm faster than this thing. I am timid at max speed, I should be able to move first, and a flamethrower, even at minus one special attack, is going to knock that thing out. So thank god we got the chip that we did on that thing, and down goes the bird. So Typhlosion, kind of a little bit of a little bit of a problem out here, we love to see it, and now... They are going to reveal the Gardevoir. So this is the final Mon they have left. It is going to trace my Flash Fire, which is annoying because while I am faster, I now can't go for a Flamethrower and I just decide to Scorching Sands. And it turns out this thing has different ideas and they're going to be zooming out here because it's actually going to reveal that it is a Choice Scarf Gardevoir and a Psychic Noise is going to take care of me. So Typhlosion goes down, which isn't the end of the world because obviously I have Scissor with the Bullet Punch in this situation. And we know that uh, Gardevoir is going to get absolutely bopped by that. 
And this is going to open up the door for a little bit of prediction action because Knowing that the bullet punch is coming, their final mon is their check to scissor being that incineroar. So instead of going for that bullet punch, I'm actually gonna instead click the close combat because with that thing at half health, that should be able to knock it out. Problem is if they don't switch here, that sucks. But they do make the predictable play. It was likely kind of just the safest option. We've seen their play style up to this point and I figure surely they have to go into incineroar here. So this thing does come in. It does get that intimidate, which drops our attack. Um, but the close combat is still enough to be able to knock that thing out, which is amazing. And down goes the freaking, the most, one of the most annoying mons to play against. So, now, they are down to one thing left. It's gonna be that Gardevoir. I have the Jolteon in the back, and I also have some rounds left in the old magazine full of bullet punches. So, this thing comes in, it got the old skinny legs flexing. It's gonna trace that technician, which probably doesn't work out for him. But, uh, this thing is still at full health, and I've been intimidated, so... I feel like my safest bet here is to just kind of go into the Jolteon and it's kind of a, a double whammy play because sw hard switching into Jolteon in this position, I know that I can take at least one attack from it and while you're thinking this thing's Choice Scarf and then it can just knock me out, I'm actually a whole different type of Jolteon which if you haven't seen this thing you should go watch my last video because Quick Feet Jolteon with the Flame Orb is now activated and this thing is sick as hell because while this thing is Scarf I'm actually faster because I'm able to get that 50% speed boost, allows me to then get that Thunderbolt off just for a chip there. And as I do live the Moonblast, we are actually just going to go down like a captain to, with his ship because the Flame Orb is going to knock me out, which is fine because we are now guaranteed to be able to go into the Scizor here. We do not care how damn fast them skinny legs get going because, uh, again, these hands are fast as hell. I go into the Meaty Claws one-on-one -on -one at this point. And a bullet punch is going to be able to finish off the match for us with that taking out the Gardevoir. So that was honestly a really good game, kind of uh, well played on there. And I also thought they had a really cool team. And in general, fun showcase showing that uh, Scizor is a damn menace and should be respected. So that is going to do it for that one. Super fun game. And this is now going to bring us into game number two. So we are working with a different squad this time. And we're also working with a little bit of a different Scizor. Because I decided, you know what, I can't do a Scizor video without a choice band bullet punch scissor. We're gonna see just how many holes we can poke and stuff. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so this time my dude's actually gonna end up leading off with the cloister and I am actually just gonna toss out the scissor. Honestly, a choice banded U-turn lead is generally pretty solid to start poking some holes and stuff. So when I see the cloister lead, I'm thinking, oh shit, this thing's gonna shell smash, turn one, and then I'm gonna have to figure that out. But they actually click the rock blast, which with skill link, I would be able to live. It would definitely do some good chip to the scissor. Uh, but it actually misses, because this guy can't see shit. And I am able to go for that U-turn, which allows us to get a whole bunch of damage there. So, knowing that this thing has not Shell Smashed yet, I figure, you know what, I can actually now afford to go right into Gastrodon and then just get my Stealth Rock up. Now, I know that I can take any attack this thing wants to throw at me. And also, if it does want to Shell Smash, it's actually in range to where a Bullet Punch with a Choice Band should be pretty close to being able to take care of it. So... They're now going to start crashing icicles into the slug, which I am able to take because I'm defensive as tits over here. And I'm now able to set up that stealth rock. I uh, just kind of wanted to get the opening to set up the stealth rock early. And after some leftover recovery, I can actually, it looks like I can take one more of those, which is nice because most of the time you want to hit Cloyster on the special side. And that's exactly what we're going to try to do, at least with the earth power. So with multi-hit moves, you never know how many you're going to crit, or if any, and it's kind of just a roll on whether or not I'm going to be able to live this, but uh, I do actually live it with 21, because East Cargo is the GOAT. We're repping East Side Sinnoh out here, and that Stab Earth Power is going to be able to take care of the Cloister. So, not having to worry about Cloister, Shell Smashing, and killing everything is always nice. And the bad news is that I did have to use Gastrodon up quite a bit here as this thing's going to be pretty much useless and kind of just be death fodder at this point. It does suck for this team because it's one of my best kind of defensive switch-ins. So now they decide to, on their empty switch, they're going to go into the Sylveon. And I'm kind of fine with this. The worst case scenario, it starts to set up with like a Calm Mind, but they actually just go for the Hyper Voice. And Gastrodon is not a fan of being yelled at. That just straight up kills me. And it's also going to activate this thing's Throat Spray. So... That now gives it a nice little plus one to special attack, but we are, well, I'm not afraid of this crazy skin ribbons weird bunny thing because bullet punch scissor is here to save the day. I Choice bandit is gonna do a ton of damage and the worst thing is they could probably go for a defensive Terra here, in which case it kind of sucks. But I just go for the bullet punch regardless. They're actually gonna end up switching into the King Gambit. And uh, this thing is one of the fellas who does not care about 
these claws. So I do go for that. It's not going to do a whole bunch of damage to this thing because King Gambit is annoying as shit. And I now have to switch. I probably, a close com combat play, predicting that would have been crazy. I kind of just figured maybe that was going to draw a Terra from the Sylveon anyway. So I obviously have to switch here. I'm going to decide to go into the Haxorus. Problem is... I know that this thing probably starts to set up some swords dances, and once this thing gets dancing and sucker punch and stuff, you just lose. So as I switch into the Haxorus here, they actually go ahead and commit the Terra Flying. That's probably just predicting me to go for the close combat. Again, they don't know that I'm going to be choice banned at this point. So as they put some balloons on their head, I'm kind of happy to see it just because it doesn't really affect this matchup especially, but also it's now going to be vulnerable to the bullet punch scissor later. So. Uh, I decide to just go for the Dragon Claw here. They do not Sucker Punch after the first Swords Dance, and they actually decide to get uh, getting a little bit greedy here. They're going to go for a second Swords Dance, which is now going to make this thing absolutely able to kill pretty much everything with a Sucker Punch, which does suck. So I do have to stay in, and I sack the Haxorus, you know, Saxorus, which is fine, uh, kind of, just because now, with that chip that I was able to get, and Scizor's fun ability to not be Sucker Punched with my priority-ass Bullet Punches, I can just go right into this thing, and now, I'm gonna be like, how do you like these bullet punches now, buddy? You were all cool, you were all tough in your steel type, but now, hey, a flying type King Gambit does not enjoy. So, a bullet punch does take care of it, and down goes the Gambit, which is always a great sight to see, especially when you take care of the Terra as well, and we're in a pretty good spot here. So, now they have the option to revenge switch in, and they can actually bring in the buff-ass Urshifu. Now, of course, they have pretty much every scary damn Pokemon, and nothing really wants to deal with this. It's kind of one of the main reasons why keeping Gastrodon around probably would have been beneficial to me, just being able to Storm Drain any of its Surging Strikes and things like that, and put it on some a little bit of pressure not being able to click those as freely. But of course, I kind of just have to switch into Ambipom as a sack here. I figure this is kind of the least useful Mon at this point. And uh, a couple of Surging Strikes able to crit every time because this Mon is totally balanced and fun is going to take care of me. So, the benefit of the Ambipom uh, sack is that now I can bring in whatever I like for free, and this is a pretty good opportunity to bring in the Luxray. We're not going to be given a Fuxray, and I'm able to kind of... I know that I can take one attack probably from the Urshifu here, and I can try to get this little fella going. I'm going to decide to go for the Trailblaze here just to get that plus one speed. Should allow me to outspeed pretty much everything they got, and Luxray is kind of in a decent position here. So, they're going to end up switching that thing out, and they're going to go right into the Sylveon, who is still pretty damn healthy. However, it does come in, take that Stealth Rock chip, and also the Trailblaze is going to hit it for a little bit of damage. But more importantly, it is now going to use up the turn to where now I do get that uh, Guts activated with the Flame Orb. And honestly, some, some words that have probably never been said that many times, Luxray is in a great spot in this match because at plus one speed, we are fast, we have Guts active, and I can actually go ahead and commit the Terra Normal to boost my facade even further. If you want to see this Luxray in even more action, I do have a uh, video from a while ago about this bad boy, but it's really fun to use. I just love Luxray, and so we bring him back. So I go ahead and put the diamond on my head. That's going to boost... Uh, my damage on the facade and that is definitely going to be more than enough to uh, take care of the Sylveon. So with that thing gone, we're feeling pretty good and now it just kind of depends on how they want to deal with the fully set up Luxray. So I take a little bit of burn damage, not the biggest deal, and they're actually going to end up switching into or at least bringing in the Yan Mega. So Yan Mega is kind of uh, not the greatest answer to this because as it comes in it obviously takes 50% from the Stealth Rock and it's not going to be faster than me unless it's able to get a speed boost, which it is going to go for that detect. Luxray says you can detect these nuts, and that is going to give it the speed boost, which is going to basically, we're both going to be at plus one speed. However, Yan Mega is a definitely quicker here. So while it is going to have the upper hand on the speed, um, Luxray, at this amount of health, it does not matter what kind of move this thing is going to be throwing at me. I should be able to live at least one of them. Now, they go for the Air Slash to try to roll for a flinch, but Luxray does not play that nonsense. I'm able to break through, and a facade takes care of the Yen Mega. So we're on a little bit of a, a mini rampage here with the Luxray. And honestly, looking at what they have left, they do not have really anything that can outspeed or even live an attack from this thing. And Luxray's feeling pretty good about himself because we got the bling on our head. And they decide now to go back into the buff bear. So this thing is probably not able to live a facade. I have the coverage, but uh, Terra Boosted Facade does the trick. However, I always forget that this thing has access to priority because the Urshifu is Pokemon's favorite child and they give it literally everything. So sadly, an Aqua Jet does take care of me, which does suck. 
and uh, down goes the kind of win condition there. But we do still have we do still have the game under control because I have a snowflake. And while this doesn't look like a good matchup, this thing actually is quick as hell. I'm faster than Urshifu, which allows me to go for the freeze dry, which does not sadly have enough damage to take care of this thing. And now. They're gonna start dancing with swords, and that is not really ideal. The problem is, however, even at plus two, I feel like I can probably take an Aqua Jet, so uh, they obviously do go for it. I live it with 20, which is honestly insane. This Snowflake is kind of a pretty slept on Pokemon right now. I feel like nobody knows how quick this thing is. It has really good bulk, specifically on the special side, but being able to live that Aqua Jet is insane, and now. The final Pokemon is going to be the Galarian Moltres, and this thing is not the kind of guy you generally want to see, and while I am going to be faster, I know that a freeze dry cannot really take care of this thing. And while I do get some pretty good chip, it does activate this thing's Berserk ability, gives it a nice little boost to its special attack, and it's freaking lunchtime for the guy because it also has a Citrus Berry, which is it's going to be sitting pretty healthy here. So they actually are going to take this opportunity to go for the agility. They want to be faster than the Snowflake. Uh, the problem is my final mod in the back being Scizor, you know, speed tiers do not really matter. So I decide, obviously I'm just going to go down here, a Fiery Wrath takes care of me. And now it comes down to the point where this Moltres is definitely going to be able to knock me out with pretty much whatever it can hit me with. Except for the fact that it's going to have to get through a Bullet Punch first. So all I can do is really just hope that I have enough chip on the guy, and as Scizor comes in, it is time to do what this metal bug bastard does best, and that is click bullet punch. I'm able to obviously get it off, and with that choice band, it's gonna be enough to take care of the Moltres. So that was an extremely close game, and uh, the choice banded scissor definitely came in clutch right at the end there to solidify the win. So that was a, a very fun match, super fun team, and Scizor is just a, a, the absolute goat. So thank you guys so much for watching. For real, the support on the videos is absolutely amazing. If you made it all the way through and are still watching, go ahead and hit that like button for me because it really does help out, and uh, I appreciate you guys. Catch you next time.